Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about classics to enjoy in the winter time. And this is actually a request I got from a viewer who asked me in a comment to one of my videos if I could do a video about exactly that topic. And this commenter noticed that a lot of the time uh, people will recommend some quite obvious choices for winter or Christmas time reads such as uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, but actually um, that one could expand this idea of wintertime reads to encompass a whole lot more. So I picked seven of my favourite classics that I think are perfectly suited for this dark and gloomy and cold time. And they kind of tend to fall into two categories. Either books are that in themselves are kind of dark and gloomy and cold, maybe books that are set in the winter time, books that are set around Christmas or around the winter, around the New Year period or anything like that. And then the other type of book that I like to enjoy in the winter is uh, the opposite, a book that's warm and cosy and comforting, you know, like a hot soup on a winter's day rather than a snowball fight on a winter's day. Um, I hope I hope those metaphors made sense. Anyway, today I want to talk specifically about classics to enjoy in the winter. The very last book that I am recommending is one that I haven't even finished yet, and that's very unusual for me, or any booktuber really, to recommend a book that, um, that you're still in the middle of, but this one's so good that I want to talk about it, even though I am only about two thirds of the way through. Let's get started though um, with a recommendation for quite an obvious read. I think if you ask a lot of people, especially on booktube, what they would recommend as a winter classic, they would probably probably mention this one quite early on and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And this book definitely belongs more in the dark and gloomy category of things because even though it is set over a long amount of time and in fact the beginning of the book is set in, I believe, in Italy, um, in the middle of summer. So it's not like this book is dark and gloomy by means of being set in the winter, but the atmosphere is cold and mysterious and creepy. And I think it's the perfect thing to read um, by lamplight in the dark after, you know, after sunset. It's perfect to read uh, on a gloomy early morning with a nice hot cup of tea. It's just, it fits the atmosphere of winter even though it isn't itself necessarily set in the winter. Though I have to say, the main character is called Winter. <laughs> Her, so we, we, uh, we don't actually have a, main, uh, a first name for the main character, but she is called Mrs. De Winter. Um, I'm sure you've heard lots about this book, but in case you haven't, here's a short summary. So our main character, Mrs. De Winter, is a newly married, quite a young woman, married into this old English family, and her husband is um, living in this remote, dark manor house in the middle of the countryside. So she moves in there and she feels very uncomfortable, mainly because this, uh, her husband's first wife, called Rebecca, seems to be lingering in the house, not in a supernatural way, but in in the furniture, in the, the way the servants behave. It seems to her like she has quite big boots to fill. And then there's also this whole mystery around what actually happened to the first wife. Um, how did she die? Because she died. And uh, what was her married life like? So the new Mrs. De Winter is completely overshadowed by her husband's first wife and then has to come to terms with it. Minerva was screaming so much outside the door that she is now joining me. So Minerva, shall we talk about my second recommendation for a nice wintry classic? And this one I'm almost cheating because it is almost one of those really, really obvious winter reads. And that is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Um, who also wrote A Christmas Carol. And actually the two have a lot of the same themes, I would say. Oliver Twist, famously the story of an orphan boy who grows up in a um, workhouse and then ends up entangled in some criminal gangs in London. 
Victorian London and I think that is where the connection with winter comes in for me. London, especially in the winter, is a dark and horrible and gloomy and depressing place. It's rainy, it's dark, it's noisy and, and I think it's a perfect setting for a winter read. Um, Oliver Twist is maybe, I don't know if it is one of those films that you watch at Christmas, I don't really watch a lot of Christmas specific television but you have this image of the street urchins cold and hungry and obviously Charles Dickens always has these themes of charity and of supporting the poor and of trying to bridge the gap between um, the wealthy and the poor in Britain and I think that's a, a theme that we tend to remember more of at Christmas. A lot of people only do charity at Christmas and a lot of people, um, especially at Christmas time, think about uh, their own privilege and the inequalities that still exist in our society. And those are themes that Charles Dickens um, discusses in a very Victorian way in his novel Oliver Twist, which is why I think it is perfectly suited to read during December especially. Um, I move on to a book that is kind of similar in the discussion of those themes and that is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I really really loved this novel when I first read it last year because it combines several of my favorite things in a book. First of all it's set in a boarding school. Our main character is a rich girl who um, who grows up in India as the daughter of some colonial colonists and uh, she gets sent to this exclusive boarding school for rich girls in London. However then her fortunes change and she goes from being the little princess who has every luxury, who has everything handed to her, who has the attention of the teachers and of her friends in school. She goes from being that privileged to being one of the poorest children in the school, having to work for her living and really having to struggle. Uh, it's like a reverse Cinderella story but what I love about this book is how the main character handles this change in circumstances and she's just an amazing um, kind of role model. I think I really would have admired her as a child um, if I'd read the book at the same age that she is in the story. Her personality and her character does not change depending on her change of circumstances but how it, I guess it widens her worldview and it widens the view of the reader in the same way. Um, it's just a fantastic story. It reads like a fairy tale uh, in that it's really beautiful, it's really magical and again for me perfect thing to read at Christmas time. So A Little Princess for me kind of combines the heartwarming, cozy type book with the dark and gloomy type book. It's kind of both in one. It's almost the perfect winter read really. Um, next one we move into the gloomy and dark side of things and I want to recommend a Sherlock Holmes book. I want to recommend either The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes or The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. If you haven't read any Sherlock Holmes yet I would recommend you start with The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and this is the first Sherlock Holmes short story collection and again London, Victorian London setting in my mind is so deeply connected to dark and gloomy winter reading that I think it is the perfect match. Again not all of the stories are set in winter, in fact very rarely does Arthur Conan Doyle actually describe the season or the, the weather or anything like that unless it's relevant to the plot, you know footprints, etc. Again, Sherlock Holmes short stories combine the gloomy, urban, depressing London setting with the cosy mystery that you can really get stuck in and because they're short stories you can really just pick them up and read one an evening and uh, work your way through the book uh, maybe in December and just enjoy it that way. Next up, another one of those almost cheats because I know that this is a film that people like to enjoy at Christmas time but I am recommending the novel to you and that is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Now I can't remember from the book whether it is explicitly set at Christmas but certainly uh, the main character Charlie is cold quite a lot and um, again we get this interplay between 
the cold season and the effects of poverty uh, because Charlie and his family are not too well off until, of course, Charlie wins a golden ticket to go and visit the nearby chocolate factory where he goes on a big adventure with some other children, uh, which doesn't end all too well for most of them. I'm not going to say much more about the plot, but I'm pretty sure you know it all. What makes this book so winter ready is not just the fact that Charlie and his family are cold and hungry at the beginning of the book, but it's also the fact that it is about chocolate and uh, what better time to enjoy a bit of sweets, a bit of candy, a bit of chocolate than in the run-up to Christmas. So it combines both sides again quite beautifully. A lovely, lovely novel. It's definitely a one-sitting read as well and um, a bit of nostalgia I think for everyone who knows the story already. Next up, I feel a little bit unsure about recommending this one because it has been over a decade since I last read it and that is uh, Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame um, or in the original French it's just called Notre Dame de Paris and this is one of those classics that you may have seen the Disney version of but I would highly recommend reading the book. Paris, similar to Victorian London here, is described as quite a horrible and dark place quite a wild place, somewhere where people find it hard to be happy. And the story is set around several characters and the Cathedral of Notre Dame and how their lives kind of intertwine. And um, again, it's not a very happy book. This is definitely more on the dark and gloomy side of things, but it is a really fantastically written novel. I read the translation into German as a teenager and, uh, and I really loved it then. And I really got into the story, really got into the characters and really got into the setting of Paris. So um, if you don't fancy Victorian London, uh, you fancy a different gloomy Victorian city, then try uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame for a bit of a French twist on things. And finally, the book that I mentioned earlier that I'm actually still reading, but I still want to recommend because I'm enjoying it so much right now, is uh, Night and Day by Virginia Woolf. And um, this is on this list because quite a large chunk of the book is set during a Christmas holiday. The book is from 100 years ago, it's from 1919, and it follows four friends, I guess you could call them friends, four acquaintances, four people who all, um, whose lives merge and intertwine, etc. Um, there is Catherine, who is a bored upper class daughter of an illustrious family, who wants nothing more than just to be left alone so she can study mathematics all by herself and uh, study astronomy. She's quite a cold and bored person um, and she finds it hard to connect with other people especially since everyone uh, doesn't really treat her like a real person based on her rich and famous family background. Then there's Mary, who is um, comes from a rural middle-class family, but then moves to London to work for the suffragist cause, so getting women the right to vote in the UK. And she works in an office, she's basically a professional activist, and uh, she also tries to find her place in this world, tries to connect her passion for the cause with her other ambitions in life. And the two men in the story are Ralph, who is a middle-class London-born um, clerk at a solicitor's office, comes from a big family and wants to make more of his life. He wants to be rich, he wants to be known he wants, he's very ambitious, but he doesn't quite know how to turn these ambitions into actual real deeds and real work. And then the final character is called William, and he comes from a very, I think he's comes from an aristocratic family, possibly links to the royal family, but kind of impoverished, so he also has to work. And his big love is poetry, but he's also trying really hard to prove himself to everyone around him as a poet and as a poetry connoisseur. So these four people uh, keep meeting and they develop relationships. And uh, like I said earlier, part of this novel is set in um, rural, I think Lincolnshire, 
where they all end up for a Christmas holiday. But the majority of the book is actually set in London, so we also have the cold, gloomy blah blah blah, what I've already said about <laughs> about London in classics. Um, for me, this is the perfect wintertime read. I didn't know that it was so perfect for this weather when I first picked it up, but I have to say I'm enjoying it. And I think if you're planning to read night and day, then do it when it's cold and dark outside, because the book really matches that weather. It's very introspective, it's very thoughtful, it's very slow. Um, and that's just what you need when the days get shorter. If you have any more recommendations for wintertime classics, please post them in the comments below. I'm always keen to get more recommendations. Thank you for watching. Bye!